Cincinnati Zoo with the Wings of Wonder bird show. And this here is Fiesta, one of the many stars of our show. Fiesta is a green-winged macaw, and that recycling behavior that you guys just saw is actually part of our summer show. So you guys got to see a little sneak peek of what we normally are doing and practicing for around this time of year. So I'll start with a little bit of background story about Fiesta herself. So she was actually born here at the Cincinnati Zoo. She is actually 29 years old. So she is a little bit older than me. She's been here her whole life and she's actually been part of the bird show for most of that time. So the reason that Fiesta is part of the bird show instead of living at the bird house or on exhibit somewhere um, has to do with what her head looks like. So you might notice that she's got these white spots and she's actually missing some feathers, which is pretty unusual. Uh, most green winged macaws will have a totally red head of feathers. And Fiesta is special because when she was little, her parents actually over preened her head. So preening is something birds do to take care of their feathers. They take care of their baby's feathers that way. But Fiesta's parents just loved her a little bit too much um, and they preened all those feathers so much that they damaged the follicle. So it's not gonna hurt Fiesta in any way. She's absolutely fine without those feathers on her head, but she was pulled from her parents so that she didn't end up totally bald. It makes her really recognizable in pictures, so she's really easy to spot whether it's Fiesta or not, but she got to come here instead and was hand-raised by people. So because she was hand-raised by people, um, we have a really great relationship with her and that allows us to train her and work with her and allows her to be a really excellent ambassador for her species. So we'll show off some of the cool things that macaws can do today. We'll do a couple of short flights with Fiesta here in a minute as well, as well as show you guys kind of how she eats. So green-winged macaws and macaws in general are known for their curved beak that they have and those feet, the zygodactyl feet. So those are two characteristics that are shared amongst all parrots. And then what makes macaws unique from other parrots as well is that skin around their eyes as well as their tongue. They have a bone in their tongue that allows them to crack open nuts and seeds, which is primarily what their diet is, um, as well as some fruits and stuff out in the wild. So I have a hazelnut, which is one of Fiesta's favorite things. And you can see how she uses her foot to hold on to the nut and her tongue to press onto it as well. Now, one of Fiesta's favorite, oh, was there nothing in there, Fiesta? Oh no, it's hiding under her tongue. So one of Fiesta's favorite things to do is to crunch the shells. So this is something that none of our other macaws really do. Fiesta will crunch them into tiny pieces. It can be kind of scary, especially when she's on your hand. One time it hit me in the cheek. So I feel like I need to wear goggles sometimes while I'm around her, um, but I think she just enjoys it. Macaws in general really like to chew um, and Fiesta is definitely no exception to that rule. So because they have those awesome beaks and that awesome tongue, they're able to eat a lot of the different fruits and seeds and nuts that other animals in the environment can't eat. So these birds are actually found in Northern South America um, from forested regions, just like the rainforest. So there's lots of different treats that they can eat out there. And by eating nuts and seeds, those are things that other animals aren't able to get into. So having that powerful beak allows them to have that food source that is more accessible. Now, Macaws are pretty messy eaters, and parrots in general are pretty messy eaters. Fiesta loves food, so rarely does she drop a ton, but occasionally you'll see them drop a piece of nut or a piece of food, and that's totally normal and what they do out in the wild as well. And it's really important for the environment in which they live. So by dropping all of those um, pieces of fruits or nuts and seeds, they're gonna be migrating and flying around um, to their food sources, to their roosting spot. And by doing that, they are able to drop that stuff and spread those plants wherever they go. Good job, Fiesta. We'll come over here. We'll see if Fiesta wants to do maybe some short flights as well. characteristic of macaws that kind of sets them apart um, from other parrots is their size. First of all, they tend to be larger. Green-winged macaws are one of the larger species of macaw. The only larger one is the hyacinth macaw. 
And they also have that really long tail. That's another characteristic of them. And they tend to be very colorful. Green winged macaws are one of the more colorful species. As you can tell, she's got green, red, and blue. Good job, Fiesta. Now, those bright colors to us might seem really vibrant and like they would stand out. But in the rainforest, scientists believe it's actually a form of camouflage. So if these guys are up in the trees where there's lots of flowers and fruits and a lot of green leaves, they actually blend in really well and can be hard to spot. But if you're listening, they'll be easy to find because they're very loud. So macaws will live in large groups, um, whether that's either just a pair to a family group to groups of 30. Uh, they do that for protection and they're very social animals so they'll be squawking all day long they'll be alarm calling if they hear a predator around um, and they're very very talkative good job fiesta ariel had a question how long do they live that's a great question so macaws live a very long time they can live uh, up to 60 years out in the wild um, here at the zoo they could live anywhere up to 80 years as well Sophie wants to know if they're born this colorful. Yeah, so they are born with a little bit less feathers. They look kind of funny, um, but as they get older, they'll start getting more of those red colorations and the blue and the green as well, but they're not as fully feathered, um, especially around their head. Becky wants to know if they can all talk. That's a great question. So yes, all parrots do have that ability to mimic sounds that they hear. Um, it, there are certain species of parrots that are better at it than others. So like um, African gray parrot or Amazon parrots are known to be really excellent mimickers. Uh, larger macaws tend to be less good at it, um, but they are able to mimic some words that they hear. I think Fiesta says hi, but I've never heard her say it. So she's definitely not much of a talker, uh, especially compared to some of our other parrots. She is definitely a squawker. Uh, she screams a lot, <laughs> um, but she can have that ability to mimic, but she doesn't exhibit that too much. Now, mimicking is something that um, macaws have only ever exhibited in human care. They don't really tend to mimic that much out in the wild. It's something that we've just observed uh, here in human care that they say hello or mimic words that we hear. Um, of course, out in the wild, there'd be no reason for them to say hello or anything like that. She's ready to go now <laughs> because they wouldn't hear those things. Mostly, they do it to get attention from humans by saying hello. I'm going to look at a parrot and say hi back, and that's what they want because they're really social animals. Um, and when they're around people, their people are their flock. So that's a great question. Erin wants to know what is their favorite foods? Yeah, so parrots love nuts and seeds. For most of our parrots, their favorite thing is peanuts, which is what she's eating right now. I think one of Fiesta's favorite things uh, is a hazelnut. Um, she always seems to go for that first, but Fiesta loves her pellet as well. Um, she just loves food in general, but I think across the board, most of our parrots here at the zoo really like peanuts, but out in the wild, they're eating a diet of nuts, seeds, fruits, sometimes leaves and vegetables or something if they can get a hold of them. Catherine wants to know how many types of macaws are there? That is a great question. You know, I am not sure of the answer to that. I believe there are over 130 types of parrots. I am not sure how many types of macaws there are. We have three different types of macaws here at the bird show, but how many there are overall, I am not sure. Are they endangered? Great question. They are not endangered. Um, green winged macaws are listed as least concern. So in their region of Northern South America, where they are from, they are pretty plentiful where they can be found. There are certain regions, you gotta lighten the load. <laughs> there are certain regions where, <laughs> good job, Fiesta. There are certain regions where they have actually disappeared from where they were formerly found, but they're still listed as least concern. Now, just because the green winged macaws aren't endangered, doesn't mean that other macaws aren't. There are a few species, I think around five, that are listed as either endangered or vulnerable. And the primary reason for that is both the pet trade and habitat loss. So people will take baby macaws out of the wild and then sell them in pet shops and things like that. 
Um, in addition to that, a lot of their homes are being destroyed for mining or logging or farming. So those are the two biggest challenges uh, that they face. If we come back over to the rock, I can show you Fiesta Recycling once again, which she did right at the beginning, because this is a great way, good job Fiesta, for you guys to help not only macaws, but all sorts of animals out in the wild. So I mentioned that habitat loss is one of the biggest reasons why certain macaws are on the endangered species list. Um, but because of that, recycling is a great way that we can help because when they go out to either mine for things or create farmland, they're usually doing it to provide a resource. And recycling is one great way in which we can save resources. So aluminum cans specifically are made of something called bauxite. It's this little ore, I guess, that's orange and it's used to make aluminum cans. It's found in the rainforest. Good job, Fiesta. And it is also found in Australia as well as China. But of course, in order to get this mineral, they have to mine underground. And when they have to do that, they have to cut down trees. And that's where a lot of birds like Fiesta live. So one great thing that we can do is just recycle our aluminum cans because aluminum is 100% recyclable. And the more we recycle that, the less they have to go out to the rainforest and other habitats in order to get that material. So we're protecting their places. So reducing what we are using, recycling what we are using. Those are really easy things we can do here in Ohio and wherever you are in the globe to help birds and animals all over the world. Stevie wants to know what you did to become a zookeeper that works with parrots. That's a great question. So I went to school to get my degree in biology. I did not know that I wanted to be a zookeeper at first. I just always liked animals. I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian but realized the medical side of things wasn't for me. Um, so I started with an internship at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History where I got to work with animals and realized I really liked taking care of animals. And there I worked with a lot of raptors and birds of prey, so hawks, owls, eagles, and I realized I really liked birds. So from there I decided this is what I wanted to do, was take care of animals. I worked at the Columbus Zoo for three years doing shows and programming, and I realized I really like doing shows and programming. And then I got this job here at the Cincinnati Zoo doing the bird show. I always said that birds were my favorite animal to work with. They're the one thing that I couldn't give up. So that is how I got to be here. So for all of you out there who want to be a zookeeper or to work with birds, my best is advice is to get out there, get experience with any type of animal, even if that's at your local shelter, volunteer at your zoo. Yes, yes, <laughs> that is correct. Um, doing all of those things will help you start getting experience so that when you get older and you can get a job, um, you have that experience on your resume ready to go. All right, our last question is, who is her favorite keeper? Okay, so Fiesta's favorite keeper is actually not me. <laughs> I'm probably one of her least favorites, although she does still like me. So for birds, it takes a long time to build a relationship with them. Um, they're very social animals, but sometimes they just kind of latch on to a person. So Dustin, who is also a keeper here at the bird show, is probably her favorite. Um, he's one of the few people that she lets touch her and scratch her head. Um, she doesn't let anybody really do that except for Dustin, so I think he's for sure her favorite. But she tolerates me well enough. <laughs> all right, guys, so that was our last question for the day. Thanks so much. They were all really good. I hope you enjoyed seeing Fiesta. I hope she enjoyed getting some sunshine here today. And if you guys check out the Home Safari page, there will actually be an activity for you in which you can make your very own Fiesta. So take one last look at all of her beautiful colors and her tail and maybe recycle and reuse some materials that you have to make your very own version of Fiesta. And stick around tomorrow for our next Home Safari. Thanks guys.